I'm making a video about you. Can you please introduce yourself? Sure, I'll pause for a moment to let the recording start. Hello, I'm ChatGPT, an advanced AI language model created by OpenAI. I can help with answering questions, providing information, and assisting with various tasks across many subjects. Let's, let's dive into your questions or topics. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So ChatGPT 4.0 has been released. What exactly is this? Oh, let's try to find it out. So first of all, great news for free users. ChatGPT 4 services now will be available through ChatGPT 0 for free for all the users. Now, there will be a difference. The paid users will get five times more access than the free users. But that being said, you will be able to upload files. You'll be able to upload images, ask questions, and even use the audio features that were not accessible for the free users before. And not only that, you will also be able to use custom GPTs. So the race is on. So let's see what exactly can be built. So if we look at their announcement, they are actually introducing ChatGPT4 as the tool for free users. So they are giving more access to the free users. So what exactly can it do? They have mentioned everything down here. So let's go ahead and look at that. So now you can upload files to ChatGPT. So here you can see you are uploading PDF. You can also upload Excel files and more. So you can discover and use chat GPTs, which means you can create your own custom GPTs and you can use any of the GPTs that uh, some other users have created. So I did come across a custom chat GPT that helps some students remove their plagiarism because of AI. So I'm not sure how good will that perform now, but for that instance, it did work. So personalized chat GPTs, again, you can create your own, the way it responds, the way it sees things and communicates, it could be with your added flavor. And now it can also browse the web. So that is great news. So here you can see it's asking five best date night restaurants and it is searching three different sites and it is giving the response. So as I mentioned before, you can also upload data like Excel sheets and it will process them for you. So that is very useful. And lastly, it can also understand images and you can ask questions about the images, whether it be graphs or image of a meal or anything that you want to get explanation of. So this is basically the overall, the basic idea of what they have introduced. You can see experienced GPT-4 level intelligence, get responses from both model and web, analyze data, chat about photos, upload files, discover GPTs, and build more helpful experiences with memory. So a lot of good stuff coming to the free version. That's the most important thing that we can get from this, that it is for free users as well, not only the paid one. Now they have also introduced the API, which is two times faster than before, and it is 50% cheaper than before, and also, it has five times more rate limits than the chart GPT-4. So that's a lot of good news coming our way. Now, if we compare this to the Google Gemini, there is one big difference. Earlier when they demoed their model, Google Gemini actually streamed it beforehand and they had frames and they put it together to create a video. So that's why ChatGPT, what they did was they wrote here, all videos on this page are 1x, which means it is real time. So all the videos are real time. So that is a kind of a war going on with these different models. Right now, uh, today is 14th and G Google is also hosting a new event next week. Microsoft is also hosting a new event. So there is quite a healthy war going on between these companies, which at the end will allow the end user to get most benefit out of this. So let's go ahead and look at some of these demos. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling though? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? Hmm, from what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be gearing up.
So as you can see, they are giving you the demo of vision. Now I did try to use this feature, but right now I don't have access to that. I only have access to the audio part and I'm able to communicate with it and it is giving me the answers, but I'm not able to show it any images. Now, there are a lot of capabilities. Uh, it is able to sing, it is able to interact. Even though in my experience, when I asked it to sing, it said I cannot sing. So I'm not sure what demos are they showing here. Uh, hopefully this is not another Google disaster. Not only that, it is able to solve mathematical problems. Here you can see uh, the founder of Khan Academy with his son, giving us a demo of how it can solve math problems. Quite simple though, and it is trying to explain and teach. And not only that, it can be very conversational. So that's the big thing, that's the big difference between the previous models and this model, that it is now more human-like rather than being robotic. So it will try to understand you and its speech and tone will be much closer to what a human would say. So in terms of functionality, this model is pretty much the same as before and you might argue that it is a little bit at the higher end or a little bit at the lower end, but that's not a major difference to anyone, but still it is getting a lot of hype. But why exactly is that? This is because it is bridging the gap between a normal person using and talking to AI. So how seamless is your experience? That's the biggest question that needs to be answered. So right now they are bridging the gap between that seamless experience. So one of my mentors, he actually taught me that good design is not visible. When you see it, you will look at it and you will think that this was effortless. So that is what they are trying to achieve here as well. When you start talking to an AI, it will be as if it's seamless. So you will not have to think about you are talking to an AI. It will be like you are talking to a friend or a therapist or an teacher or an educator. So that's the biggest difference here that the latency of conversation has been reduced and now more free users will be able to interact with it, will be able to provide the data and that will be processed again to get some better results. So hopefully this will be coming to all of you very soon. Right now I'm seeing that a lot of people do not have access to this. Hopefully it will be rolling out soon and everyone will enjoy the benefits of this. And there is still some latency, but in the coming weeks or in the coming months, we should be able to get rid of that as well. So let's see what Google and Microsoft have to counter with this and how will they react? Hopefully not another disaster, something useful that we all can use. So this is it for today. I hope you have learned something new. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, share it with your friends and I will see you in the next one.